Welcome to the Your Town Television Program. My name is Jeff Klein, your host uh, for uh, aspects and issues of interest for the Naval Postgraduate School. Uh, for this segment, we have uh, a, a department chairman uh, as a guest to talk about the Systems Engineering Department, Dr. Ron Giacchetti. Welcome to the show. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, uh, we always like to start this segment to learn a little bit more about you personally. So uh, tell me, where did you get your Ph.D.? So I got my Ph.D. at North Carolina State University. Are you from North Carolina originally? I am not from North Carolina <laughs> originally. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Uh, I, I'm, uh, I, I grew up in New York, but my mom's family was from North Carolina. You didn't capture and their accent at all. I, <laughs> no, I did not. <laughs> and uh, so, so that's what got me to first uh, think about for graduate school going to North Carolina. And, and what sealed the deal is I was married at the time, and my wife's friend was at Duke University and told my wife, hey, you have a place at Duke, too. Oh wow, that's so, great! You know, since we were a package, we were able to go down together. And, Is that some type of triangle, the academic triangle, or something that's known? Duke yeah, so North Carolina State is in Raleigh, Duke right. is in Durham, and then uh, UNC is in Chapel Hill, and, and they're all very close. And what was your research focus for your dissertation? Uh, so my research focus, I uh, went down there. My interest was in integration for manufacturing systems. Uh, prior, prior to going back to graduate school, I was working in the aerospace defense sector up in New York. Okay. So I, so I worked on the F-111, B-1B, and EA-6B programs. Which are all aircrafts. Which are all <laughs> aircraft. Right. Well, yes. wait, uh, the all Air Force aircrafts? Not the E-6B, that's the uh, Navy. The EA-6B is Navy. Right. Uh, F-111 is Air Force, which right. uh, played the same role as the EA-6B. Right. Uh, and then the B-1B, the defense avionics on it, was actually uh, derived from what was on the A-6B. Right. Well, you, were so you an aeronautical engineer then or an electronic engineer? Or? Uh, my undergraduate degree was mechanical engineering. Right. Okay. Uh, so I was in, you know, the, the, the systems are tremendously complex. There's right. There's a hundred different boxes of electronics that go into the plane. Uh, so it was a matter of how to build and integrate that and incorporate it into the plane. That, that was the challenge. So systems integration was actually your dissertation area? So, so that's how I started. Uh, and my dissertation was to bring manufacturing information, how this has to come together forward to inform design decisions. Because designers are making decisions on how to specify components, and the design, and if they don't understand the implications, it could become very costly to make. Oh, I see. So, so if we could bring that information forward, we can make better decisions uh, for a less costly system. That was sort of uh, uh, Ford's original concept, wasn't it? Is you can have any color as long as it's black and <laughs> the model. No, I understand yes, what you're saying. Yeah, you're yeah. saying the design itself has to be informed by how you're going to make it or what's available to make it yes. uh, in order to be both cost effective and to work as well. Yeah. Well, that's great. Now, was, was your PhD in systems engineering or another, another degree program? So uh, in uh, the public sector, usually the department's industrial and systems engineering. Right, okay. So the PhD is actually just called PhD in industrial engineering. Well, how did we capture you at the Naval Postgraduate School then? So I was uh, a tenured faculty in uh, Miami, Florida, and I was there for quite a long time teaching. I was looking for a change, and since I was tenured, I'm not desperate to find a job. So I was looking where's a good place to go uh, professionally mm -hmm. and as well as lifestyle. And, and so actually, in that year, when I came here, NPS was the only place I applied to. Oh, wow. Uh, and I, I think what caught the eye of the faculty at the Naval Postgraduate School is my research area went from kind of that uh, manufacturing systems, it, I, it became broader to enterprise systems, huh. looking at how everything comes together into to a large system. And they saw a tie-in to net-centric warfare. And they saw that could be a contribution within the systems engineering department and kind of 
fill a hole that they had uh, in, in terms of a knowledge area that they should be in. Well, you use the term net-centric warfare, and not a lot of our audience may know what that mm -hmm. means. So can you sort of explain that? Yes. So the, the Navy, if you think about it, they have different platforms, ships, planes. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, none of those platforms are out there isolated like you know, back in the days of the sailing Christopher ships, Columbus right, right. or <laughs> Captain <laughs> Cook. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. They're, they're all connected. Uh, and so net-centric warfare is taking advantage of that ability to connect all the different systems uh, for greater information dominance uh, for targeting and so forth. And so now ships can uh, target and engage uh, another ship or threat that they don't even see. Yeah. That, that makes perfect sense. Yeah. So uh, you are the chairman of the Systems Engineering Department mm -hmm. inside the Graduate School of Engineering and Applied Science. Before we talk about those responsibilities, tell us what systems engineering is. Although you sort of hinted at it in your previous comments, mm -hmm. What do systems engineers do? Yeah, uh, systems engineering is a relatively new engineering discipline. It, it really came out of, it started with uh, Bell Telephone in the 20s, mm -hmm. but it was really World War II that got systems going. Because during World War II, the Department of Defense is building very complex systems for the time on a large scale. And so what systems engineers do it is the technical aspects of how to determine the requirements for these large systems, how to allocate it to the subsystems, how they're integrated, and how do you manage the life cycle of design and development in that complex system. And, and so that's the role of systems engineering. Well, it's quite understandable then why the Navy wants some of their officers, in fact, the all the services need some of their officers educated uh, in this particular area in the graduate degree program. So what does your responsibilities entail as the chairman of uh, the academic mm -hmm. department? Yeah. As the chairman of the systems engineering department, so I'm in charge of, we have currently eight different educational programs. And so our department, uh, we in charge of those eight programs. I have 40 faculty and staff supporting those programs and we have approximately 400 students enrolled in those programs at any one time. Uh, so as chair of the department, it is to manage kind of that part of the organization. So the business side of the education to deliver those eight programs. Yes. Can you talk about a couple of those programs? Because some of them I know are actually uh, the cutting edge education in the sense that it's distance learning as well as resident programs. So mm -hmm. can you describe uh, both those? Yeah, so in, in the department we have uh, resident programs which are predominantly active duty military officers who come here to Monterey. Mm -hmm. uh, the majority of the students we get are engineering duty officers. So that's a uh, special class of officer in the Navy. Uh, they're usually lieutenants. They'll come here, get a, a graduate degree, and now they're qualified as an engineer and they go back out to the Navy as an engineer. Uh, Far larger is our uh, distance learning program that we manage out of Monterey. Uh, about 350 students in the distance learning program. Most of those students are civilians who work for the Navy. And they work in one of the system commands which establishes the requirements for systems, uh, helps design and develop systems. So that's... Uh, do the maintenance of the systems. Do the cases. maintenance of the systems. All right. Yeah, so that would be uh, Naval Air, Naval Sea, uh, Spay Wharf, kind of the IT integration efforts. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, that program has been along, uh, around how long now? Uh, the Systems Engineering program is uh, 14 years. Okay. And the distance learning, I believe, was established more or less at the same time, so it's a at least a decade. Who sponsors these programs? Who's the the admiral that sort of looks over your shoulder to make sure that you're producing what he or uh, mm -hmm. she needs? Yeah, that's, uh, I, I think that's a unique and highly beneficial aspect to the Naval Postgraduate School is that there's a sponsor, an individual, who, who in my case is Vice Admiral Benedict. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Uh, he is the senior engineer and duty officer in the Navy. He is also in charge of the Strategic Systems Program, which is the nuclear submarine program. Oh, yes. Uh, so he's located in the Navy Yard. So he's our point of contact for ensuring the relevance of our education to the naval officers. Uh, and, and then I mentioned the DL program. Uh, they're mostly civilians. Uh, a co-sponsor for the DL program, the Distance Learning Learn program, program, right, is the uh, uh, Deputy Assistant Secretary of the Navy for Systems Engineering. Wow! So uh, they, they come down from Washington to do this program review. Uh, yes. Yeah, so that person uh, comes from Washington and will do the program review. In fact, a, uh, a lot of uh, people don't understand that. Not only do we go through accreditation process at the Naval Postgraduate School, which mm -hmm. every gra every uh, uh, academic institution does that through uh, either um, um, educate or engineering accreditation, but we also go through sort of a program verification inspection, as you said, mm -hmm. by some Navy uh, senior. A flag officer or senior executive service, or in your case, a, a political appointee. Is that right? Uh, yeah, I believe at that yeah. level it's a political appointee. Wow, they were interested yes. in this in this very important program. Um, so I also understand that uh, recently our systems engineering department was nationally ranked. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, the Naval Postgraduate School for Systems Engineering is very well known. Uh, the reason is we're, we are one of the largest programs in the country uh, because the Department of Defense is the main employer of systems engineers. You know. mm -hmm. uh, in our case, we were ranked by the U.S. News and World Report, uh, and, and the ranking done by them is based on a uh, survey of the other academic chairs in the uh, discipline. So it's kind of like a vote of your peers for crying out loud. So it's wow. uh, peers voting for, you know, what are the good schools, yeah. Well, that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Well, w we had uh, on, a, on, a, our, on a segment the dean of research who talked about you know, various, uh, the importance of how research integrated with graduate classroom education is important. Can you tell us a little bit about what your faculty and students do for research? Yes. You know, systems engineering, it's very broad, so we, we do quite a few things. So I'll, I'll hit on some of the main topics sure. that, that people are interested in now. But the, the research really goes hand in hand with the education. It's, it's not two separate things. Uh, and for us, truthfully, the research is highly applied. Mm -hmm. We do projects direct for the Navy. Some of the topics that faculty and a lot of students are working on, uh, autonomous systems, is hot topic, very relevant for the Navy. Uh, we do autonomous air vehicles. Our students will go down to Camp Roberts, which is about two hours south of Monterey, to do experiments. Uh, we do unmanned underwater vehicles. So we do a lot of uh, technical and operational type of research on how to employ them for uh, naval operations. We are very involved in directed energy weapons, hmm. uh, putting lasers on ships, for example. You mean how that I how that it integrates into their other systems on the ship, or? Uh, yes. So recent uh, student-led research has been uh, energy management because uh, lasers consume an immense amount of energy on the ship. Uh, how to so I'm sorry by later l energy management. You mean if it consumes a lot of energy. You can't use energy somewhere else, so you have to plan where to put that energy? Uh, potentially, yeah. yes. Okay. Uh, and also planning out that if I have three targets, maybe I won't be able to hit all three within the time frame with the laser, for example. Oh, oh exactly. <laughs> so you need to apply energy on the gun or something like that, uh, right? Yes. So, there's, uh, so they looked at how to manage the energy and how to integrate it with the combat information control system mm -hmm. uh, to manage that. Uh, we have students also looking at operationally how to use the lasers. You know, you're introducing a new technology, it's not clear operationally how can this benefit the Navy's operations and, and also what new uses could we put it to. And how to integrate that into the larger fleet as well. Yes. Now, yeah. do, the, uh, do your civilians in the distance learning program, do they work on similar projects with your faculty? They, they do work on similar projects. Uh, we also do some more of the back-end engineering type projects with them. 
for example, in the Navy, model-based systems engineering is a big push right now. I'm sorry, mal model-based. Oh, model-based. Uh, yes. and, and so, what the idea there is is on any of these engineering programs, there's a tremendous amount of paperwork. Oh yes. Yeah, you know, which it's very hard to go through, find information. Uh, it creates inefficiencies in, in the design and development of the system. A model-based systems engineering approach gives you a centralized repository where all that data resides, and everyone has access to it. Oh, so you all can plan from the same central So we platform. all work in from the same kind of models, which are descriptions, formal descriptions of the system. That makes perfect sense. And so yeah. your distance learning uh, teams get involved in, in, in those aspects as well. That's great. As well, yes. Um, well, after a graduate, of the, uh, well, at the civilians at the distance learning programs, I know they probably stay in their job uh, and continue to work. Uh, but what about the officers? You mentioned that they were engineering duty officers in some cases. Where do they go after they graduate? Normally, what do they do? Yeah, so the engineering duty officers will frequently, uh, many of them do go back to system commands, mm -hmm. uh, like Naval Air, where they get involved on in these programs. Uh, some of them will go to shipyards as well. Uh, they might do maintenance for the fleet, maintenance activities. So there's uh, uh, approximately 900, just under, just shy of 1,000 engineering duty officers in the Navy. And so the billets are scattered you know, throughout. Well, um, let me, now I also understand though that you have uh, Army officers at times as well. Mm -hmm. and, and what do they do? Do they do the same thing essentially? Uh, they, they do. The Army has uh, places, I'm thinking in Michigan, where they design and develop tanks, for example, and armored vehicles. And those officers go there to help with the... And the officers process. will go there. Uh, they'll work in uh, their acquisition uh, kind of community as well. Now, one more question. We got about uh, 50 seconds left or so okay. in this segment, but uh, I know you've been here for about five years now, six years. What do you enjoy most about living in the Monterey County area? Well, like I told you, what, one of the reasons I came here was because it's Monterey. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I love the climate here, and I love the availability of activities. Uh, I'm an enthusiastic sailor. Oh, great. Well, this is a great place for it. Monterey is... a perfect place for it. You know, every Wednesday night during, this, during the season, I'm out there sailing. Are you so. part of the Monterey Yacht Club? Uh, I, yes, I am. And uh, so I race in the Shields fleet, sure. and I race on the Navy boat. Well, in that case, uh, the Yacht Club's going to have to sh watch this show sometime. Yes. <laughs> <for it. laughs> well, Ron, thank you very much for being on the show. Uh, the chairman of our Systems Engineering Department at the Naval Postgraduate School. And we hope uh, you join us again for our next segment that highlights interesting issues in research and students at MPS.